Over the past few weeks, Dr. Aleda Guevara, daughter of the revolutionary icon Che Guevara, has been travelling through India. She has been addressing and interacting with leftists, members of progressive organisations about values and concepts such as unity, love, humanity and above all, unyielding resistance, which are cornerstones of the Cuban revolution. Dr. Guevara herself has been travelling for decades, talking about these values as a champion of the Cuban revolution, the values for which her father fought and died for, the values for which millions of Cubans continue to struggle today. At NewsClick and People's Dispatch, we are very honoured to have Dr. Aleda Guevara with us for the second time. Thank you so much for joining us. We are also very happy to have with us Professor Vijaya Venkatraman of the Delhi University, who will be translating for us. Dr. Aleda, you have been travelling through various Indian cities, receiving quite a rapturous welcome from leftists, from progressives, many of them very young men and women who are inspired by the example of Che and Cuba, of Fidel. Could you maybe take us through what have been your experiences in India? La verdad es que hay una gran recepción por parte del pueblo con relación a expresiones de amor por el Che, por Cuba, y eso siempre te conmueve, ¿no? Uh, it is very, uh, it, it, it makes me very emotional to see the kind of response that uh, the figure of Che and the memory of Che uh, evokes in the people in India and the love that they have towards him. La verdad también es que he tenido a veces que ponerme un poco brava porque mucha gente encima a tirarse fotos y les explico una colectiva pero una individual es imposible. But uh, often times I've, tri I've had to, you know, make it very, uh, make myself very harsh because people just come up to you and want photographs and they want individual photographs and I have not been able to deal with it and I keep telling them that I can't give so many photographs so I've had to get a little annoyed at times also. Pero en general, la verdad es que me ha gustado mucho poder ver en el país gente tan diferente, ¿no? Es decir, religiones diferentes, culturas diferentes, lenguas diferentes, y a la misma vez unidos bajo ideales, ¿no? En este sentido de, de amor a la revolución cubana, al Che Guevara. And uh, she's what has struck her most is that people uh, she's met a variety of people of different religions, different speaking different languages, different cultures, but how united they are in their love for Cuba, for the Cuban Revolution and for Che Guevara. Ay, yo soy siempre muy martiana, ¿no? Sigo muchas las cosas de José Martí. Y él decía que cuando un hombre reconoce las virtudes de otro es porque las lleva en sí mismo. Entonces, eso significa que hay muchos Che Guevara multiplicados aquí. She says that I am a follower of José Martí and his ideals. And Martí says that if you like something in another person, a part of it is within you. So that's why she finds that Che Guevara's ideals are multiplied in millions of Indians also. And that's the reason why they uh, feel so attracted towards him. Absolutely. In 2019, you visited India during the anniversary of the revolution. And right after that, we know that the pandemic hit the entire world. Now, Cuba's example was an inspiration uh, during the pandemic. Cuban doctors going through various parts of the world. Cuban advances in vaccines, again, giving hope to people in various parts of the world that it is not only the rich countries which could develop vaccines. So could you maybe tell us a bit about how people in Cuba responded to the challenge of the pandemic, how the government responded, what was, how was Cuba different? Bueno, en primer lugar, tengo que decir que la pandemia fue cruel para todos, ¿no? Es una situación de verdad muy dura para cualquier población, porque, sobre todo en Cuba, estamos acostumbrados a defender la vida, ¿no? A través de la ciencia. Y ahora, de pronto, murieron cubanos y no podíamos hacer realmente nada, ¿no? No, no podíamos frenar eso inicialmente. Fue muy duro. Uh, the pandemic was really cruel and uh, it was very harsh for more all over the world, not just in Cuba. 
and it was very hard for Cubans because Cubans defend life. And in that, uh, we saw that, you know, it was a fail in the sense that they could not save lives and so many Cubans also died. So that was something that it was very harsh and it was very hard to uh, see that happen. Tuvimos muchísimos problemas por causa también del bloqueo económico de Estados Unidos, porque en vez de, de, de ser más suave, es decir, permitir que pudiéramos adquirir cosas que necesitábamos para la vida del pueblo, el bloqueo de Estados Unidos se hizo todavía más fuerte, impidiendo que barcos con alimentos, con medicamentos, llegaran a Cuba. Uh, in Cuba, particularly, the blockade uh, played a very big role in how we could, uh, you know, fight the pandemic because uh, instead of, you know, making it easy for uh, medic medicines and other supplies to come to Cuba, it became even more difficult. And so the pandemic was particularly harsh towards Cubans because of the economic blockade that the U.S. Uh, has desde el punto de vista cultural para el pueblo cubano fue tremendamente difícil porque nosotros estamos acostumbrados a besarnos, a abrazarnos y ahora no se podía. Entonces eso ya fue duro para la población. Por suerte el Estado de inmediatamente asumió que había que buscar cómo resolver esto y la mejor manera es a través de vacunas. Pero nadie nos iba a vender vacunas a nosotros, entonces tuvimos que hacerlas. Uh, Cubans are very uh, warm and affectionate people and they are, we are very used to hugging and kissing each other. And so it was very difficult suddenly this uh, distancing and this uh, that we could not, you know, hug each other or come close to one another. That was very hard for the Cuban people to take. And uh, the Cuban government, of course, got into action immediately and uh, decided that the only way to fight this was vaccines. And of course, nobody was going to sell it to us, so we decided to make our own vaccines. El Estado cubano prácticamente agotó todas las reservas económicas del país porque no podíamos trabajar. ¿sí? Solo los imprescindibles trabajaron, entre ellos los médicos, pero la mayor parte de la población recesó de, de trabajar. Estaba en sus casas cuidando a los niños, cuidando a los ancianos y el Estado pagó el salario a esa gente. Entonces, económicamente es tremenda la situación que hoy tenemos. El Cuban State went up to its last reserves of eco, uh, economically to, uh, uh, to make it easy for people to stay at home and look after children and look after old people who needed to be looked after. And uh, they were paid salaries uh, even though they did not work during this period. So Cuba has economically gone down to its last reserves in this sense. Así que ha sido una situación dura y todavía vamos a seguir viviendo situaciones muy difíciles por la pandemia. Pero logramos hacer cinco vacunas, vacunar a toda la población cubana. Pero claro, así hicimos cinco vacunas pero no teníamos jeringuilla para vacunar, porque no somos productores de petróleo. Entonces, gracias a la solidaridad internacional, recibimos la jeringuilla y pudimos vacunar a toda la población. Prácticamente el 98% de la población tiene más de cuatro dosis puestas. Uh, they were able to make the vaccines, but they did not have the syringes to, uh, you know, give the vaccines. And so finally, they, because of international solidarity, they managed to get the syringes and then they have uh, vaccinated. Uh, it is almost up to a level of 98% of the population has received four dosages of the vaccine. Y yo no sé si ustedes escuchan, escuchan la frase normal esta de amor con amor se paga, mm -hmm. ¿no? Pero nosotros decimos solidaridad con solidaridad se devuelve. Y en ese sentido, pues... Tenemos que hacerlo y, y servir a todos los pueblos que podamos y ayudarlos. Y eso lo hacemos con mucho amor. Uh, just like the saying that love begets love. So uh, she thinks that solidarity is something that has to be, you know, solidarity begets solidarity, but at the same time, it is also to be passed on or returned. So she says she, uh, the Cuban, Cuba will help 
uh, people to uh, you know will return this solidarity in uh, that it has received with so much of love and it has been able to do make uh, this has been possible only because of the international solidarity that cuba received right and while cuba was an example of solidarity uh, the united states this great imperialist power was the exact opposite despite being the richest country in the world we know that of course during the pandemic it caused its blockade had caused a huge amount of problem for cuba and even before we know for instance when hurricane ian hit the country the united states was nowhere to be found instead it has actually promoted what is being called a hybrid war against the people of cuba so how are cubans responding and resisting to this kind of hybrid war to these kind of provocations en estos años de pandemia no solamente tuvimos huracán tuvimos otros accidentes tremendos en el país eh, un, un hotel por ejemplo explotó por un problema de depósitos de gas they've had multiple problems in these years of the pandemic it is not just the hurricane mm -hmm. uh, a hotel exploded in uh, in la habana verdad yeah. en la Habana. Matanzas, eso yeah, es. yeah. Y después de eso también tuvimos el incendio de uno de los eh, eh, centros donde se conserva el petróleo, donde ponemos el petróleo. An, uh, explosion also a fire in uh, one of the places where they store petroleum. Y nos costó vidas humanas. And it cost them lives. Estados Unidos solo dio orientaciones por teléfono. Pero México y Venezuela acudieron a ayudar a, a Cuba de inmediato. Uh, United States gave its, you know, uh, homilies through uh, telephonic messages, but Venezuela and Mexico came immediately to help. Es decir que a nosotros Estados Unidos lo tendríamos como un buen comer comercio, ¿no? Porque estamos cerca, porque ellos son buenos productores de alimentos. Naturalmente podríamos comprarles las cosas, pero si ellos no quieren, nosotros respetamos eso. Lo que no podemos aceptar es que el gobierno de Estados Unidos intente por todos los medios que ningún otro país del mundo comercie libremente con Cuba. Uh, uh, the, the United States uh, could have been a very good, uh, uh, you know, uh, in trade partner with right. Cuba because of the proximity it has and geographical proximity and it also produces a lot of things so we could have been you know a very good trade partners but if they don't want to do it so be it but what is unacceptable is that united states puts sanctions on other governments not to trade freely with cuba that is not acceptable yo digo que hablar del bloqueo es relativamente fácil pero vivirlo es una situación muy difícil porque, por ejemplo, yo como médico, hay momentos en que eh, he tenido necesidad de buscar un medicamento específico para un niño. Pero como es de una patente de Estados Unidos, aún teniendo el dinero, nadie oferta el medicamento porque tienen miedo. Uh, she's, uh, it's very easy to talk about the blockade, right. but it's very difficult, to, very, very hard and harsh to live it, live through it. And she says, I can give an example from my own life that I'm a doctor and uh, when I was trying to get medicines for a child, which, which was life-saving uh, medic medicines, it was impossible because nobody wanted to sell it out of fear. <coughs> the problem is that if si a empresa comercia con Cuba, cualquier cosa, el gobierno de Estados Unidos lo detecta, inmediatamente va sobre la empresa. Primera cuestión, si tiene capital en la empresa esa, la retira. Segunda cuestión, si no tiene capital dentro de la empresa, él se cree con la potestad de ponerle multas multimillonarias porque comercia con Cuba. O puede decirle, ninguno de tus productos se vende en el mercado de Estados Unidos. So the United States follows the policy uh, three three things they do. One is if any uh, uh, firm, uh, any any company, right. does any trade with Cuba, with any Cuban company or with Cuba, the Cuban state, then uh, if they have capital invested in that 
firm then they withdraw the capital that is one thing they do if they don't have capital then they put fines on the on the firm and you know going into running into multi millions and thirdly what they also do is that they they bar debar that firm from uh, having any uh, trade uh, right. with uh, any in the US, in the US. so that <clears throat> debars the company and they are at a loss so then they do not want to trade with Cuba por suerte hay empresas que se mantienen firmes y rompen el bloqueo por ejemplo la Meliá en España que es una empresa turística de, con hoteles con no ella tenía dos hoteles en Cuba y Estados Unidos amenazó que si ella no retiraba los hoteles de Cuba Estados Unidos le cerraba los dos hoteles que ellos tenían en Miami y la la compañía se puso firme dijo bueno si ustedes quieren cierren los dos de Miami pero me tienen que devolver todo lo invertido y era un buena cantidad de dinero pero además se quedaría miles de personas sin trabajo su problema suyo claro Estados Unidos se frenó uh, however what is gratifying is that there are companies which are standing up to the to this kind of pressure from the United States and she gives the example of the Spanish firm La Melia which has hotels which is in the tourism business and they have two hotels in Cuba and they also have hotels in the United States especially in Miami and uh, the United States asked this company to uh, close down its hotels in Cuba and the company said that we will not close down our hotels in Cuba but if you don't want to do business with us we'll close down our hotels in Miami but the whatever money we have invested you have to give it back to us and also the loss of jobs is is your problem so the United States had to step back so this is one such example where uh, the blockade uh, you know people stand up to the blockade and people are with Cuba in that sense como dato interesante hoy la Melia tiene más de 30 hoteles en Cuba uh, as an interesting aside Melia has more than 30 hotels in Cuba today porque también nosotros respetamos el valor because we also uh, respect the value absolutely right so in this context of course uh, you talk the blockade is an issue which is now increasingly gaining a lot of attention globally activists people from the left protesting against the blockade even countries in the UN are voting against the blockade but i want to talk about another issue which is not got the kind of attention it should which is the family code and uh, from what we understand the family code is truly revolutionary it's an example for people across the world for countries across the world so could you maybe talk about you know the process of how cubans actually received it and how they supported it en cuba todas las leyes importantes se discuten con el pueblo todas y el código de familia es una cosa muy importante porque es lo que va a regir la vida de la familia cubana en los próximos años uh, in cuba all important legislation is discussed with the people and as you say as you said the family code is something which is going to affect each and every uh, family each and every household so therefore it was widely discussed así que comenzamos la discusión del código de familia en los centros de trabajo en las escuelas de niños que son ya de preuniversitarios en las universidades también la secundaria se discutió se discutió en los barrios en los lugares donde vivimos. It was discussed at the uh, in the center in the workplaces, it was discussed in the schools, it was discussed in the uh, you know pre-university uh, students uh, just be entering university and also in this at the secondary level it was discussed in all these levels and also in colonies neighborhoods. Oficialmente Cuba es un país eminentemente católico, oficialmente pero realmente hay una mezcla de cultura religiosa entre las africanas y las españolas, ¿no? Las católicas y las afro. Y ninguna de las dos tiene más fuerza que la otra, ¿no? Eh, son bastante parejas. Pero las dos tienen muchas cosas machistas como religión. Uh, uh, officially Cuba is a Catholic country, but uh 
in actual practice, if you looked at the African com cultural com religious uh, practices as well as the Catholic practices are equally strong and have an equal influence on the Cuban uh, cultural life. And both these religious uh, cultures have very, are very, very uh, male chauvinistic. Eso implicó que muchos compañeros nuestros no entendieran algunas cosas del Código de Familia y entonces no aceptaban algunas cosas que estaban puestas en el Código. Había que discutir con ellos, analizar, volver a discutir, volver a redactar cosas. Fue un trabajo largo, fueron meses discutiendo con la población, escuchando lo que decían, la Asamblea Nacional volviendo a elaborar artículos. Fue un trabajo bien, bien serio, de verdad. Uh, because of this uh, reason, uh, many of the clauses of the family code were not accepted by, were, were not acceptable to many of the comrades. And so there was a lot of back and forth discussion, movement, and uh, it was a very long and slow process, but which ultimately bore fruit. Se discutieron cosas básicas en la sociedad, ¿no? Por ejemplo, el derecho a la mujer. Ya nosotros lo tenemos establecido que socialmente la mujer no puede sufrir ningún tipo de discriminación, nunca. Pero todavía en el hogar ocurren algunos hechos de discriminación. El código toca también estos aspectos dentro de la familia. It is accepted in Cuban society that the woman, the gender discrimination is just not acceptable. And that is a, a fact which is the basic uh, fundamental fact accepted by all. But despite that, in, there are homes in which discrimination takes place and that was the most touchy subject to deal with. But it has been dealt with in the... Cualquier tipo de discriminación o violencia contra la mujer es condenada por el Código de Familia. Any discrimination or violence against women is condemned by the Family Code. Este código también protege mucho la infancia, porque los niños tienen derecho. Son personas pequeñitas, pero tienen los mismos derechos que todos. The code, code also recognizes the rights of infants, children. And although they are very small, uh, and, but children's rights are very important and the family code plays, uh, places special emphasis on that. Y en Cuba los niños son sagrados, sagrados, porque es el futuro de la sociedad. Los niños son la esperanza del mundo, no son los que saben amar. Entonces hay que protegerlo de cualquier tipo de situación que pueda dañar su estabilidad. Uh, children are the pillar of and strength of society and they are the future, they are the hope for a better society. So children have to be protected at all cost and uh, you know the, uh, the family code plays, places emphasis on this. Entonces, había palabras que se cambiaron y que la gente no entendía. Entonces, hubo que explicarlas o cambiarlas en el código. Si las personas no lo aceptaban así, había que explicar qué es lo que significaba y si lo entendía, se aceptaba. Si no, se cambiaba la frase. Another example is that there were uh, words or phrases which people did not understand. Or so either there was an attempt made to explain it to them and so that they understood and accepted it or if it was not possible to explain, then they had to change the words. Y el aspecto quizás más polémico era el darle el derecho a todas las personas sin importar su tendencia sexual. Entonces eso en las religiones, por ejemplo en la católica, son muy conservadores con eso. Pero se olvida de un concepto fundamental de la religión que es el hombre, el ser humano. ¿sí? Ninguna religión puede estar por encima del bienestar del ser humano. Y ellos no entienden que una persona puede tener una sexualidad diferente a la que tú crees que es correcta, 
pero tiene que ser feliz, tiene que ser respetado, tiene que tener sus derechos conservados. One of the most thorny issues was the issue of uh, equal rights for people of different sexual orientation. And uh, in that respect, the Catholic religion is very, very conservative. And they do not, uh, the, the most important thing to understand is that the, no religion can be above human beings. And the human being is this, uh, every human being has the right to be f happy, uh, despite following any sexual orientation which you may think is correct or incorrect. Así que eso fue quizás uno de los puntos más difíciles para algunas personas aceptar, pero bueno, por suerte eh, fue la mayoría quien decidió, ¿no? Y en ese aspecto más del 62% de la población cubana dijo sí al nuevo Código de Familia. Uh, so this was the, one of the most difficult uh, uh, issues uh, where there was a lot of uh, discussion and uh, dissent also. And, uh, but fortunately, the majority of the Cuban population agreed to all these uh, points. And so the family code was passed with 62% of votes. And finally, very briefly, so that not to take too much of your time as well, for the millions of people who follow, who believe in Che's legacy, in Fidel's legacy, in the, in the inspiring work that the people in Cuba are doing right now, what would be your message? Bueno, la verdad es que al Che, a Fidel, no solamente se le debe llevar en camisetas o, o en banderas, hay que estudiarlos para poderlos practicar, porque la, la fuerza de estos hombres no está en su imagen, está en los hechos con los cuales vivieron. Um, it is important to say that uh, it is not enough to carry Che and Fidel on t-shirts and flags, but it is important to study them because these men are more than their appearance and what they have written or what, they, what, their, uh, what their ideas were is what and that should be practiced that to put it into practice you need to read them yo creo que eso es lo que siempre digo no que hay que estudiarlos a ellos para poderlos conocer mejor y entonces decidir si realmente van a ser nuestro ejemplo de vida o no so that's what i say, say everywhere i go that people must read uh, what they have written people must read Uh, what they stand for, and then decide whether they want to follow them, whether they want them as their heroes or not. Thank you so much, Dr. Aleda, for talking to us, for telling us about the Cuban experience, the Cuban resistance, and the Cuban struggle. Pues yo tengo que agradecer también que a pesar de culturas diferentes y distancias tan grandes geográficamente, el pueblo indio siempre ha estado al lado de la Revolución Cubana y del pueblo cubano cuando lo hemos necesitado y eso se agradece eternamente. I also am deeply grateful to uh, the Indian people for standing so solidly with Cuba despite the distance, geographical distance and the cultural distance that may separate us. Uh, I am deeply uh, grateful to the Indian people for standing with Cuba in our, through our difficult times. Thank you. And, and thank you so much, Professor Vijay, as well. Welcome. And that's all we have time for today from News Click and People's Dispatch. Do keep watching our videos, many of which talk about the struggle of the Cuban people and their resistance.